Well, today is part three of this series called Finish. Finish. And what we're doing is we're looking at some of the great people of the faith that have finished strong. And in Hebrews chapter 12, I want you to look at that. And verse 1 is kind of our featured verse that, that talks about a lot of what, when you see that, therefore, it's in light of what's already been said in chapter 11. And it gives a great list, and it doesn't expound on every one of the people of, of, that made that hall of faith uh, uh, book, chapter, chapter 11. Uh, but this says, therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, okay, let us throw off every sin or everything that hinders us and the sin that so easily entangles us and let us run with perseverance the race that is marked out for us. And what we have learned is that every one of us have a race. We have a purpose. God didn't put you here to sit on the sidelines. He put you here to finish. And, and what we're doing, and I, I love this because every situation and every single person that we're studying had to put their faith in God to be successful, but the, every one of them had a different reason that pulled them away from God, and something happened that we can all learn from. So today we're going to look at Jonah, and and if Jonah could come down out of the stands in the race that we're running, and we could go to lunch with him, and we could say, Jonah, how do you do this and this and this? That's what I'm praying that we can learn from. Now, already we've looked at Sarah. Already we've looked at the faith of like Abel. Abel, uh, his brother Cain, gave an offering, a sacrifice to God. And it was just some, and it took no faith, and it, it, it didn't. You go back and listen to that message, but Abel did. Abel pleased God because his offering took faith. He gave him the fatty portion of, of his cattle. He, he gave him the firstborn of his cattle, not the calves that he wanted to sell, the livestock that he wanted to sell that was going to help pay his bills. He gave all that to God, and God blessed him as a result and blessed him for generations. Cain, on the other hand, we saw didn't. And so what's the one thing out of that message that we talked about? If you want to step and have faith like Abel, be generous. Don't be stingy. Be generous in your giving to God as an offering, as a sacrifice. And it does take faith. And then we've also looked at the faith of Elijah. Elijah was a great prophet. And, and you go back and listen to that and look at it. We see how Elijah went from the greatest day of his life to the worst day of his life within about a 24-hour period. And he, he was a strong, he, was, he went from faith to fear. He went from my God can do anything to, oh, my goodness, looking at his problems and saying this is not going to work. And what's the one thing that you can do if you're going to have faith like Elijah is keep your eyes on Jesus and your hands on the plow. Don't turn loose. Elijah left the mule in the middle of the field, took his hands off the plow and says, I'm out, son, and he took off. Many of you maybe have done that. And my encouragement to you is you're not going to find happiness in your life. You're not going to find fulfillment in your life until you keep your eyes on Jesus and your hands on the plow. Amen. Today, if we look to Jonah, Jonah is a guy that made a lot of bad choices, and he had to pay for his choices. But I think sometimes it's easiest to learn from someone that's messed up the worst to teach us or actually can teach us the most. And so because Jonah made some mistakes, Jonah, he had a pride problem, an I problem, he, his opinion. He said, I know, God, this is what I think, and you're wrong. And he went the opposite direction of what God called him to do. Jonah's ideas about what he should do with the Ninevites and God's ideas were two completely different ideas. And his pride overwhelmed him and his pride in his decisions and his choices and what he thought and what he said about those terrorist people. He just couldn't buy into what God was telling him and his pride ruled and overtook his faith and covered it up because of what he thought. So pride and faith are two opposites we see in this story. Faith says yes to God and pride always says no. Mm -mm. 
Pride's a weird sin. Sometimes you can see it. It comes across as anger. It comes across as division, as slander. It comes across kind of like toothpaste. You can't get it back in when it comes out. You say stupid stuff, and you wish you hadn't said it. Pride comes across in, in many of them. Sometimes pride is behind the scenes. Sometimes pride can't be seen. But pride blinds us from God's plans. Our pride blinds us from seeing the truth. Our pride is a rebellious spirit of I. I want I think, in my opinion, my way, leaning on our own understanding, on our own understanding, not trusting God, our way, I, 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 this weird sin of pride, sometimes we can't even see ourselves. Most of the time, we don't see it in ourselves. Maybe we can see it in other people. But it's really concealed. It's a dangerous sin. And we see this sin entangling Jonah's feet, his actions, his steps. So God warned us, and I want you to look at Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18. He, always, he says there's a warning in his scripture. If, if when we let pride sink into our heart and maybe uh, pride, again, pride doesn't have to be this loud voice, angry thing. It could be something hidden in your heart that maybe you don't even know is there. But Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18, it says, Pride goes before destruction. When we get pride, a storm's coming, son. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. It's a guarantee. It happens in my life. It, I have to deal with pride in my life. Paul had to deal with pride in his life. He, he had this thorn and God allowed in his side, and we don't know exactly what it is. There's a lot of speculation, but Paul had a thorn and a demon even that harassed him, and, and, and he said, take this away from me, God, and, and, and it, it happened in his life, and he, he realized, God said, no, I'm not going to take this away from you. My grace is sufficient for you, so he, Paul said, bring it on. He said, bring it on, but Paul this destruction, he, it was happening in his life. He can relate to that. He had pride. You have pride. I have pride. Uh, Jonah has pride. But God says pride goes before destruction in a haughty spirit, before a fall. So we can identify with Jonah. He made some bad choices. <laughs> he let his pride call the shots. You can identify with that, right? We all can. So what would Jonah say to us? We went to lunch, and you asked him, Jonah, how do I get rid of this pride problem? How do I have faith? You ended up, I know you made some mistakes, Jonah, but you ended up so strong, and God used you in a powerful way. He had to do some things to get you there, but give me some advice, Jonah. What would that be? How did you tell me how to finish strong in my life, and what would he say to us? I think he would say this. It's Todd. <laughs> you got to understand God's a God of second chances. Amen? He's a God of second chances. Maybe you have messed up. Maybe you have let pride make some decisions in your life. And, but uh, God is a God of second chances. Let's turn to the book of Jonah. Great book, small book, amazing book, action pick, pack book. Find it. Jonah chapter 1, and I want to look through verses 1 through 5 with you, and let's begin to lay out this story. And a lot of you kids that are here in this service with us, maybe you've heard this in our little buckaroo ministry, in our children's ministry, and you may know more about Jonah than your parents. You may know it, so you just help them out, okay? And you show them where it's at in the Bible, and you show them, tell them all you know about Jonah while I'm preaching. Is that all right? So look at it, Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. It said, And the word of the Lord came to Jonah. He said, go, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because of its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah, he didn't do what God told him to do. He ran away. He ran away from the Lord and he headed towards Tarshish. 
God told Jonah, he said, I want you to head northeast, and Tarshish is the opposite direction. It's southwest, and he went as far away from God as he possibly can go. As far as he could get, get he went the opposite direction. And, and they, 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 he didn't want to do that. These were the Assyrians. These were like the terrorists of the day. And Jonah said, no, they don't deserve anything good. They deserve to die. They deserve to go to hell. And he turned, and his pride d- made his decisions for him. He didn't put his faith and trust in God. He said, he was thinking, they're going to kill me. They're going to, they're, just like they've done everybody else, no way, God, I'm out of here. They would take hostages. They were terrorists. Any resistance against them, they would kill. And Jonah goes the opposite direction. And he asked him to do this, to go and tell him and ask him to repent. Jonah said, no, keep reading. So he went down to Joppa where he found a ship. And he, he was bound for that port. And he says, and when the Lord sent a great wind, after he gets in the ship, the Lord sent a great wind on the sea. And such, it was so violent storm that arose that the ship was even treading or, or was threatened to break apart. This is a serious storm that God brought. And the sailors, they were afraid. And each cried out to his own God. Keep reading. And they they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten up the ship so it would be able to make it through. Do you know that the decisions that we make many times cost something? Things and choices you make are going to cost something. I just I want you to think about that for a minute. Every decision that we make costs other people something. Keep reading. But Jonah, he had gone down into the belly or the deck of the ship where he laid down and fell into a deep sleep. Isn't it crazy how sometimes people that are letting pride drive them and they're making bad choices, how they totally have, there's just, they're just totally unconscious of the impact that they're having on other people's lives. Families, spouses, your church, your friends, people that you work with, totally. It's crazy. We just, we just, get to a point and we're just unconscious of it. Jonah's unconscious. His decisions that he made, they were carried, they carried with them a, a consequence. They impacted everybody on the ship. And the big question today for you and for me is are we making decisions that draw you closer to God? Or are you making decisions that are drawing you further away from God? That's the decision. That's the question. That I think God's focused on. And I think we need to focus on. Every decision we make carries some impact with it. So, the storm came. The storm came. The moment of trouble, crisis is there. We got to make a decision. We got to make a choice. A choice got us there in the first place, okay? A choice can get us out of there too, or can cause the problem to get worse. And so he said, It's my fault. He, he's aware of now what's happening, what God's allowed to happen here. He says, It's my fault. The storm coming on you is my fault. And I think that's the first step to us doing what's right. We was talking about President Trump doing what's right. I think it's the first step to you and me doing what's right because it's the right thing to do. Whether it's with God or whether it's man. man, Because when we make bad choices, it's do like Jonah did. So what's the first thing Jonah would say to you and me if we could sit down at lunch? What would he, what would he say? 
uh, if we could do that. He's, if you had asked him, how do I get over my pride that's driving my decisions and my choices and convert that to faith? How, how, do, I, how do I keep my pride from taking over faith? What would Jonah say is number one is we need to take responsibility. Take responsibility. When we make bad choices and our pride gets in the way and we say something we shouldn't have said because I, 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 or we feel something or we make a choice or we back away from God and God says go here and instead you take your hands off the plow and walk out of the field on God. Nobody knows where you were supposed to be going. You had your eyes on Jesus at one point, but you turned loose and walked out of the field just like Jonah did right here. Storm's coming. Maybe you're in a storm because you let go of the plow. Keep reading. <laughs> y'all with me this morning? I'm just making sure. Can y'all relate to Jonah? Let me hear you say a big old amen. <laughs> We've all made bad choices, and you're looking at a bad choice preacher, okay? You made a bad choice getting me a preacher, but God's having mercy on you, okay? So here, look, look at it. Jonah chapter 1. Let's look in verse 12. He says, we pick up, he says, he says, so pick me up and throw me into the sea, he replied, and it will become calm. Here he goes. I know that it is my fault. He's a big boy. Jonah said, I know it's my fault that this great storm has come upon you. And that's the step that we need to take, a step towards God, a step towards faith is to take responsibility, to, to get in the right place where we need to be when we are in the wrong place that we shouldn't be. Do you hear what I said? To, to get to the right place where we need to be when we're in the wrong place that we shouldn't be, number one, I think Jonah would tell us, take, you take responsibility for your mistakes. Proverbs 28, verse 13 says that. It says, a man who refuses to admit his mistakes, I put in parentheses pride. That's what pride is. A man that refuses to admit his mistakes can never be successful, but if he confesses and forsakes them, he says he gets another chance. <laughs> another chance. Not just with God, but with people, I believe. So we need to take responsibility for our bad choices. Coach Wooten, Wooten, I love this. He said this when he was in UCLA. I just thought it was so powerful. I saw this, and I had to use it. He says, you are not a failure until you start blaming others for your mistakes. <laughs> Can I get a good amen? You're not a failure until we start blaming others for our mistakes. So God knows here that where Jonah was. He knows exactly where he's at in the ocean. He's not getting away from God. <laughs> he turned and run from God, but he's not getting away from God. God knows his every move, his every step. And, and God brought the storm to him and to wake him up and to cause the fear and the terror, brought him to this moment of crisis. God knew exactly where Jonah was at. God knew that they were going to throw Jonah over into the sea and could have left him and deserved to drown, <laughs> but he didn't. God always is prepared. Amen? <laughs> he had a plan for Jonah. <laughs> he had a plan. He had a fish ready, a big fish Love, I love this story because we began to see the love of God even for those of us making wrong decisions because of pride, when pride rules and, and we see this happening, even though he makes bad choices, even though he lets his pride rule him, God's ready and waiting in our moment of crisis too to rescue us. Amen? He's always there. When you think you've gotten away from God and you've got a little stress away, you're not doing anything but running into him. He was just running into Jonah. God's love shows up here in this story, and God's mercy shows up here, and God's waiting for him. He brings him a way of salvation through a big old fish. And 
Jonah takes responsibilities. What else would he say to us? We need to repent. Number two, Jonah would say, if y'all want to get get your get rid of your pride and and you need to get back in a situation where you're in good standing and faith with God, repent and turn away from your bad choices that you've made. Turn away from them. And that fish, I guarantee you, was in a rough place. He thought he was having a meal, but he's in a rough place. Now this fish has got this crazy lunatic guy running from God, and God shut down the digestive system on the fish and won't let him digest him and get rid of him. <laughs> he shuts him down. He can't eat, and he's got this guy crawling around in his belly. And Jonah's knowing at this point in his belly that he's repented and getting right with God. And we see this in Jonah chapter 2, verse 9. Look at it in your Bible. It says, he says, what I have vowed, I will make good. He says, God, you get me out of this mess. <laughs> you get me out of the belly of this fish, and, and I will make good what I have promise what I vow to you. I repent. I'm turning. I'm not going to run from what you're telling me to do. I'm going to say yes. Remember, pride says no. Faith says yes. Acts 3, 19 explains this in the New Testament. We're talking about Old Testament. I love the mirror in the, uh, between the Old Testament and the New the New Testament says, Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. Do you see the next words? That times of, can you say that word? Refreshing. You wound up tight. You're not happy. You don't have peace because there's a sin of pride crawling around in you like a parasite. And it's keeping you tight. And you need to repent of your sin. The Bible says times of refreshing may come from the Lord. So you need to say, God, I'm sorry. I've run. I've gone the wrong. You told me to do this and this and this. I've read this in your word, and I'm doing the opposite. I've taken my hands off the plow, and I've left. Uh, uh, Lord, I want to come back to you and finish what I started series called Finish. That's repentance. I want to come back and finish. Get back in the race. Proof. Proof is in not in your prayers. The proof is in your feet after you repent and you go back and you head back northeast or in your, in your life and you head back to God. You go back to God. And that fish, he took Jonah back. And I know he was just sick. And all you all you fishermen out there know what it's like to get fish guts on your hands, and it stinks. And I mean, I can catch twenty five fish catfish on a trot line and have them skinned pretty quick or, or or filleted pretty quick. But man, your hands after just that takes me thirty five to forty five minutes to to go from having a live catfish cutting his tail off, bleeding him, flaying them out, throwing away the guts. I'm done thirty forty five minutes. He's in fish guts for three stinking days <laughs> and fish guts don't get off of your hands very good at all i mean i take toothpaste and rub all over my hands and i gotta clean all that junk out from under he's in fish guts for three days it's nasty the worst thing in the world is when somebody's running from god it stinks it stinks you don't know it but we stink when we let our pride make decisions, it's stinky, it's nasty, it's awful. I can only imagine what this fish is thinking when he finally gets over by Nineveh and he chunks him up. He doesn't throw him up in the ocean because he's so nasty and stinky. He doesn't want any other fish to taste him. He's so bad. He's so awful. Throws him up on dry land. Vomit, fish guts. Three days. And there Jonah stands. And look what happens in Jonah chapter 3, verse 1. He says, and then the word of the Lord came to Jonah. What's that say? A second time. A second time. God is a God of second chances. God's grace, his love, his forgiveness came to Jonah a second time, a second chance. If you look, we have a tendency 
to look at each other's faults and each other's failures. God's not like that. God looks beyond our faults. He looks beyond our failures when we repent and brings forgiveness. It comes like a rushing wind. And he looks beyond that. He looks at the heart and gives second chances. I believe Jonah wanted to do what's right. I mean, he's not a bad guy. He's a godly man. He wouldn't have, if, he, if God wouldn't have called him to go preach if he wasn't, uh, didn't have a great relationship with God, and he'd come to a very, he'd, you're talking about growth tag. Jonah was there, but he, he went the opposite direction. I believe Jonah wanted to make the right choices, but his pride got in the way. He didn't agree with what God was doing. It wasn't Jonah's way. Maybe there's a lot of things happening in your life that aren't going your way. But if they're going according to the way God wants them to do it, and his word. Turn to God and say yes. Amen. Not no. Pride says no. Faith says yes. I love this story. Jonah, he then trusts God. So he took responsibility for his wrong choices, his pride. He repented for his bad choices. And what else? Did he do? He embraced God's ability. <laughs> we talk about faith. You want to embrace, you want faith, you need to embrace God's ability. See, not our abilities, not our own understanding, not what we think. I, 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 pride, pride, pride. Instead, we, we need to face and, and, and look at God's abilities, look on God's abilities. Pride focuses on our abilities, what we think. Faith focuses on God's ability. Pride ignores God's abilities and t turns us back to what we think. Uh, am I right? Am I right? Pride's a wicked thing. Ephesians chapter 3 verse uh, 20 says, And now to him who is able, God is the one that's able, not us, immeasurably in all that we ask, or, or any, I even can imagine according to his power that works within us. See, God is able. Amen? God is able. Question, is your pride driving your life or is faith driving your life? Is your pride taking you away from where God wants you to go or be. Another question to consider is what storm what storm is it going to take to get your attention? What destruction's coming? Because you, you, you're letting pride drive your choices. What storm's coming? Here's another question. What, what is your pride telling you to do that has you going the wrong direction? Are you headed southwest instead of northwest? I, I don't know, guys. I'm just trying to learn from Jonah here. I got enough to deal with my own problems. I'm here to help you and encourage you to keep your eyes on Jesus no matter what. And not look at your problems. Keep your eyes on Jesus, your hands on the plow. Another question I, I'd love for you to consider before God is are your choices God honoring? Are they God honoring? Another question to consider that will tell you whether or not pride is driving your life is, is how will this, your decisions, your choices, how are they affecting, how do they affect my spiritual health? How's that affecting you? You show me your friends and I'll show you your destiny. Your friends say exactly where you're at or where you're not. I want to hang around 
friends that are going so hard and fast for Jesus that I can't keep up. <laughs> I'm trying to run and gas it that are passionate for Jesus. I don't want to hang around people that are lazy for God. I don't want to hang around. I want to run, run around people that I can't keep up with because they're so fire for God. Amen? So how will your choices affect your spiritual health? Another question to consider is how will this decision that you're making and what you're doing affect people closest to you? <laughs> That's a big one. Amen. We don't think it is. We get like Jonah in the belly of that ship. We don't realize there's consequences. Jonah's choices almost sent a whole bunch of people to hell. Maybe God would have had to get another Jonah. That's up to God. But his choices, if it were dependent on Jonah's choices, would have sent a bunch of people to hell. I want to close and uh, bring some of these thoughts to an end where we're having this conversation maybe with Jonah and what we'll do in our own lives. And I just want to uh, give you some advice here. If you could just listen to me a, se a second. Maybe you've made some bad choices. Maybe your pride has driven you uh, even away from God. But don't let your bad choices define you, okay? That's not who you are because <laughs> you've made mistakes. Don't let your bad choices define you, and don't let your bad choices disqualify you. <laughs> you need to come to that meeting after church with me, <laughs> and we're going to talk about that a little bit this afternoon. He lunched together. Jonah, he repented from his pride. He obeyed the word of the Lord in faith. He went back to Nineveh, even though they could have killed him, put his trust in God's abilities. God said, do it. It's going to be okay. God can do anything in faith. And sometimes we need to swallow our pride, and we need to go back to where the problem happened and ask God for forgiveness and maybe ask somebody else to, for forgiveness and apologize for what you said or you did or you didn't do and, and apologize and I give you a little bit of advice, and I'm having to learn this the hard way. Uh, don't ever mess up an apology with adding an excuse to it. <laughs> If you're apologizing, apologize. Don't say, but I had this. Don't, don't mess up a good apology with an excuse. <laughs> I, uh, I came across this, this story about a guy named Eric. And Eric was, uh, uh, there's actually a video I saw this. And Eric, he, uh, he got mad one night. He made a bad choice. He went to drinking and he drove home. He's drunk. And he hit a car broadside, and he killed two young girls, both of them dead. He didn't even know what he'd done. So he's in jail. The court dates come, and, and he realizes what in the world he's done. And Eric is going through this, and he's, he's sober, and he's just broken Half and true, and you can in two, and you can see in the courtroom that Aaron Eric is broken, and you see the two families broken too, of the two young ladies that they had raised and that didn't do anything to deserve this. And one of the mamas of the two young ladies. told Eric she said I forgive you for what you did in taking my daughter's life you can imagine what that did to Eric it drove Eric into doing some soul searching and Eric actually ended up doing the steps that Jonah did he, he accepted responsibility for his bad choice and he repented for what he had done. And he served his time. And after he got out, he went back to every single family member, the best he could possibly do, and just asked them to forgive him and apologize. And today, Eric and the mother that forgave him and their family travel all over the United States 
open the ministry talking about forgiveness. How did how did Eric do that? And how did that mother do that? See, Eric just took the same steps to have faith like Jonah. Faith like Jonah and Elijah and Abel. He took those steps back to God. He didn't let his bad choices define him. I want to read this quote to you by James Taylor. He says, God always gives his very best to those who leave the choices to him. <laughs> Amen. Isn't that good? God always gives his very best to those that leave their choices to him. Wow. See, God has the very best for you. And the secret is that you take the same steps that we take the same steps that pride, we're not, we recognize where pride is making choices. So what is, I, I, in every message, I've given you one thing. I've told you three things that Jonah would say. I'm going to give you one thing. One thing that all of these things flow out of. If you want to grow, we're talking about growth track. You want to you want to produce. You want to grow and increase your faith in God in a massive way. You want to do one thing that's going to drive you to take responsibility. One thing that drives you to repentance. One thing that improves your ability to be able to embrace in God's ability. One thing to help you grow in your faith like crazy. One thing. If I give you one thing to do today that would radically change your life that all these other things would flow out of what would it be say yes for God until God says no you see that say yes for God until God says no so somebody asks you to do something that brings honor to to God, your answer is yes. Remember, pride says no. Faith says yes. Somebody invites you to go to the growth track to, to start producing and figure out what your gifts are and make a difference and discover what your purpose is. The answer is yes. Somebody, hey, give, you got an opportunity to go to serve day? Yes. 21 days of prayer in August? Yes. Small groups in the fall? Yes. Baptism, the very first Sunday of next month, you follow the Lord and believers baptism. Don't say no to God. Yes. Repent. Yes. Give your life to Jesus. Yes. You do that. And, and this, this morning, get real with God before you leave this place and say to God, you know, I know you can relate to Jonah. I can. You can. He said, Brother Tyler, I know I can. I, I really relate to Jonah and the bad choices that, that he's made. I've made bad choices. I've let pride get in the way of my faith and my trust in God. Maybe you're in a storm right now in your marriage, in your relationships, your family, it's your kids, it's work. We're all in some kind of storm. But today, would you get real <laughs> and pray to have faith like Jonah? I want to ask you to bow your heads, heads before the Lord, and let's, let's just commit right now. The service is not over. It's an opportunity for you to get right with God. And just say to God, God, I think I've got in the wrong boat. turn around I repent I'm going to take responsibility I'm going to trust in your ability not in mine I'm going to move forward I'm going to, God I want to get on the right path I want to have the right attitude I want to have the right spirit I'm going to let your word guide me Lord Jesus forgive me I want faith like Jonah to make a difference. God, right now, my answer to you is yes. Until you tell me no, my answer is yes.
until you tell me no. Still, every head bowed and every eye closed. And just the most important part of the entire day right now. You're here today, and you know there needs to be a change in your life, and you haven't surrendered your life to Christ. Would you ask God to change you today from the inside out? See, that Jesus gave his life for you. No man will go to hell unless you choose to pay for your own sins. See, Jesus has already paid for your sins. As he gave his life for you, will you give your life to him? If that's you this morning, just say, Jesus, today I'm asking you to change me from the inside out. Help me get set free from my past and my sin. Lord, I want to discover my purpose. Forgive me of my past. I commit my life to you in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to seal this today in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, thank you for changing lives. Amen.